So I know I said that we'd be moving on to test-driven development today, but first we need to set up Postgres locally. And we need to do that because it's important to keep your development and production databases in sync, as there are subtle differences between each relational database engine. The worst time to really find out about those differences is when you push your app to production and it crashes. So we already installed the main dependencies we need Psycho PG2 and Flask SQL Alchemy. So we can actually jump right into installing Postgres. And if you want to verify that you have those dependencies installed, you can run pip freeze with your virtual environment activated. And you can see Flask SQL Alchemy here and then Psycho PG2 here. And that also should match what you have in your requirements.txt file. All right, to get started, make sure you have Postgres installed locally. I've included links in this video's description for installation instructions for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Please follow the instructions for your specific operating system and then launch the Postgres server. So I'm on OS X and I found that Postgres app, which I'll bring up now, is the easiest Postgres solution. And it's actually dubbed that too. The easiest way to get started with Postgres SQL on the Mac. And it's literally just that easy. Just download, drag to the applications folder, and then fire up the app, and that'll launch the Postgres server. And regardless of the operating system, to test that your server is running, you can just type psql. So if it screams an error back at you, you know it's not working. But if it goes right to the Postgres shell, like it did in my case, then you know it is working. Now since we already have SQL Alchemy set up, we don't need to change anything about the actual creation of the database in our Python code. And that's within our dbcreate.py file. So if you remember, SQL Alchemy is an ORM, which allows us to talk to a number of relational databases using Python objects and it makes it very, very easy to switch databases. Now we do, however, need to add the database URI to our environment variables, since the old environment variable is still associated with our SQL database. And we can test that out. We can just add a quick print statement here. So if we do print SQL alchemy database URI, and then if we just run the file, Python config.py. You can see that the database URI is still pointing to the SQLite database. So to update that environment and variable, we need to run a command. And let me just copy and paste this in here. So this is changing the environment variable, this database URL, and setting it equal to our Postgres URI. And you can see here that this is the actual name of the database. So there's, there's two things to note. So first and foremost, we need to set up that database. So if we open up the shell here, now we can run create database and then the name of that database. So that was discover flask dev. Don't forget the semicolon. And so our database was created. So the next thing to note is with this command here, if we do not add this local environment variable to our bash profile, then we will need to run that command to establish the environment variable every time we open a new instance of the terminal. However, do we really want that database URL variable set to that specific URI used for every project? I, I doubt it. Unless you only have one project connected to one database on your entire computer, you need to find a different solution. So there's this cool project that you can use, and there's actually a number of these. I like to use this um, project called AutoEnv, and you can set directory-specific environment variables. So be sure to check out the GitHub URL for more information on that. And it is beyond the scope of this tutorial to show you how to use it, but if there is enough demand, perhaps I will make a video. So I know it seems like we've gone over a lot so far, but it's actually not that much. Set up Postgres, and then change the environment variable. 
And then the last thing that we need to do is just set up our database. And we can do that by running the dpcreates.py script. So if we open up that script real quick, why don't we just go ahead and add a new post here. So let's call it uh, Postgres. And then for the description, oh, we set up a local Postgres instance. Now we can save that. Okay, let's run the script. So Python, actually we need to exit the shell here. And now if we run Python db create.py, and so that created the database. And then just for as a sanity check, if we run this Python config.py file, which is gonna print the database URI, you can see that the new environment variable the new database is associated with our Postgres database. Okay, so let's do a final manual test. So let's just go ahead and fire up the local server. So Python app.py. And I'm gonna comment this out so I don't get that printed each time. And if I navigate to localhost 5000, let's go ahead and log in. So it's admin and admin. And here's all the posts, and there's actually a new post here, Postgres. We set up a local Postgres instance. Nice. And so we can actually go ahead and get rid of the other database, and that's called post.db. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. And that is gone. Cool. So just to recap one more time, we set up Postgres, got the server going, changed the environment variable, and I discussed that you can either set that environment variable each time, you open up the terminal, put it in your bash profile, or use that auto m package to set environment variables specific to each directory, and that latter method is the best. And then we set up our, our new database by running that dbcreate.py command. Cool, so next time we're gonna set up a system for handling database migrations and also discuss what database migrations are and what they're used for. And then we'll have one more video where we'll look at test-driven development and I'll also preview the project that we're gonna be working on through the rest of the series. And also, if you are a member of RealPython and want video transcripts for all these videos, please send us an email at info at realpython.com. All right, I will see you next time, thanks.